Hey, 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 we're back out here again, still going through a woman's journey home. I am Tanika Maria. For those of you who are not familiar with me, I am an author, speaker, podcaster, and I'm all about helping high achieving women of faith get real, be healed, and move on in wholeness, peace, clarity, wisdom, and confidence in every area of life. But in particular, when we, when we go through life transitions and pivots, and I have been through plenty, right, in the area of relationships relationships, of just living life, being an empty nester, coming into a new season. So God has been so faithful and so good. And it's my joy, my pleasure, and my privilege just to get out here and share with you all. And so this week, you know, last week we finished up chapter three last week. We talked about dealing with those unregulated emotions. We talked, we talked about how you can't cure what you keep covered and anything swept under the rug is still in your house. So we can't keep hiding our unprocessed emotional pain and sweeping stuff under the house and perpetrating and pretending and faking the funk like it's okay when it's not. So we talked about that last week. So be sure to go back and check out that video. If you have not done so, definitely subscribe, like, follow, share, turn on your notifications, tag and share this with someone who needs to hear this word, right? So let's dive into chapter four. Chapter four, the fever, the fret, and the frenzy of the flesh. Oh my goodness. I love this quote by Joyce Meyer. She says, and this is taken straightly from a woman's journey home. Be sure to grab your copy. You can get it on Amazon. You can go to the link and get a, sign, a personally signed copy from me um, through my website. All of that is in the links. So be sure to check that out and grab your copy so we can go along today, go along together. But anyway, so we're in chapter four. We take care of ourselves. We make our own plans and we struggle to make things happen our way and in our timing. This describes the natural way, the quote, normal way most people live. It is a way that produces every kind of misery. We struggle, we get frustrated, we fail, we leap. Uh, I'm sorry, we end up weary and worn out most of the time. We are confused and defeated and have no peace and joy. We're, we're, we're you know, that word leap came to my mind because I'm thinking, okay, we're leaping to do this and we're leaping to do that. And we're trying to rush, trying to bustle, trying, hustling and grinding and being, it's just the fret, the fever. I got to do, I got to do, I got to be consistent. I got to keep pressing. And that's good. You need that focus and that discipline. But where's the source of your energy coming from? Where is the source of what you're doing, that energy? Is it coming from your flesh, your ego, and your pride? Or is it really coming from a subtle place of, I know what I'm doing. I'm focused. I'm drawn on the energy of God if inside of me coming from a deeper source and not just my unhealed emotions, not just my ego and my pride. I'm out here hustling because I want to prove something to somebody. I'm out here hustling and grinding and struggling and sweating and striving because of the fear of missing out, because I feel like everybody else is and I'm out here and I'm not doing anything and I need to be and I got to do that. You see, I've been there and I got the T-shirts, right? I have the T-shirts. You know, we all have these goals, these dreams, these visions, and these plans, the hustle and the grind. Everybody's an author. Everybody's an entrepreneur. Everybody got a business plan. Everybody got an idea. Everybody's trying to pursue purpose. Everybody got this, that, and the third. Everybody got a webinar. Everybody got a masterclass. Everybody got a podcast. Everybody got a clubhouse room. Everybody got a course. Everybody got a digital project. Everybody got an academy. Everybody got this, and everybody got that. Everybody, 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 everybody. And then you feel like, well, what am I doing? And so now you get on the burn bandwagon and sort of burn yourself out. As I read from this chapter, this is what this whole chapter is about. So this is what I write about myself. So I too must jump on the bandwagon and burn myself out in the fret, fever, and frenzy of my flesh. When I say flesh, I'm talking about the ego, that side of myself that's doing stuff for reasons other than what God called me to do, to do, the side of myself that wants to do stuff in my own strength, the side of myself that's operating from pride and ego and woundedness and unresolved stuff, the side of myself that wants to prove something, the side of myself that wants to be seen. That's what I'm talking about. So I too must jump on the bandwagon 
and burn myself out in the fret and frenzy of my flesh, trying to make something happen in my own strength that only God can do in his timing through his power and strength. Over time, I have come to realize that every action must have intention. Every action I take must be must be taken from the space and pace of God's grace. That's the difference. That's the difference right there. The actions that you're taking, is it, in, is it in alignment? And are the actions you're taking in your business, your ministry, your purpose, your career, in your family, your calling, your relationships, is it taken from the space and pace of God's grace or your personal zeal and energy? My personal zeal and energy can only take me but so far. I learned that the hard way. Your personal strength and your personal uh, and your... Uh, that it's going to peter out eventually, right? And then you're going to need discipline and focus that's coming from a higher place, from a higher why, from a higher reason other than the low level fleshy, fleshly, egotistical reasons of wanting to be seen and all of that kind of stuff. You got to have something higher. You got, it has to be bigger because when the rubber hits the road, you're going to be tested and you're going to need more than that to sustain what God gave you. Right. So let me read this again. Every action I take must be taken from the space and pace of God's grace and not my personal zeal and fleshly energy. Every time I operate in my own energy, there is an entirely different set of results than when I operate in great God's grace and timing. That'll preach right there. There's a different set of results and you feel differently when you're doing things in your own strength and energy as opposed to when you're doing things in God's grace and in his timing. It feels different in your body. It feels different in your spirit. The outcomes are different. The impact is different. Come on. Let me keep reading. And if you want more, you need to grab your copy of the book. What I've come to understand is that when I'm not all gung-ho, trying to get something done, but rather I am slowing myself down to receive instruction from him and to also move much slower that things get done in such a way that I am, number one, not half dead, first of all. Number two, able to be quiet on the inside, i.e. more peace, which is a fruit of the spirit. Three, enjoy the process more. Four, have energy. Five, Get it done at a higher level of excellence. And number six, getting it done the way God would have it done. I've also learned that to operate in God's grace and his pace does indeed require a lot more slowing down and waiting. See, we don't want to hear that. We're too busy watching Instagram and everybody else telling you that it needs to be all fast and stuff. But to really operate in God's pace and grace, you've got to slow down and wait. You got It's going to require thinking, planning, reading, praying, sitting, being quiet, study, research, thinking, planning, prayer, quiet, study, thinking, research, not scrolling, not getting caught up in YouTube videos, not being in and out of clubhouse rooms. See, see, we don't want to hear that, right? Listen, come on, let me keep reading and then we're going to wrap this up. It requires subjecting my flesh which always wants to do this now and is so ready to get things done now. And this can be a painful thing to do, especially when it seems like everybody else is doing things. Why am I still here sitting here waiting on a strategy? We want our strategy now. This is where I'll land my plane and then we're going to be out here next week. But I, I want you to get this so that you can sit with this. I've learned that it's better to wait on God and walk out my instructions from a place of ease and certainty than it is to jump out in zeal only to crash and burn later. God, I'm still learning that lesson. Come on, somebody. Let me read this sentence again. I've learned that it is better to wait on God and walk out my instructions from a place of ease and certainty than it is to jump out in zeal only to crash and burn later. I've learned that God is more interested in my character development and the woman I am becoming in the process than the actual end result. He's more interested in your character, not how big your business is. He's more interested in your char not character, not how many followers you have. He's more interested in your character and not how many likes and shares and sales and results and numbers and stuff you're getting. 
God is more interested in our motives and intentions behind why we're doing something versus actually what we're doing. Sit with this for a minute. Sit with it. Sit with it. God is good. No more fret, no more frenzy, no more, no more fever of the flat, fret, flesh. I can't get my words out. Let's operate from the space and pace of God's grace. And let's get started in 2022 so that we don't bring